Welcome back to The Big Picture. I'm talking with Beth Barlato, who is running for the 27th Congressional District. And there's a lot of competition, and, yeah. it, and it's interesting with the coronavirus lockdown. It's kind of thrown a monkey wrench into mm -hmm. schedules and campaigns and fundraising. I'm thinking uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of complications. Uh, how has this affected um, the way the campaign has to be run? Right. Well, it has affected it. Um, we had five events scheduled for March, and by March 15th, you know, New York State was shut down, and we had five events that we had to cancel. And then it was, um, it, it really had been an unprecedented time for all campaigns. So for me, I'm a, I'm not a politician. So this is the first time that I'm I'm running a campaign, but now I'm relying on people who are not only my consultants but talking to other members of Congress with Zoom conferences and it was unprecedented for them too. Nobody has ever experienced anything like this where all of a sudden all fundraising and all campaign events came to a complete halt throughout the whole country. And so we had to come up with very creative ways. So what we started doing is first off during the initial month, you know, there were a lot of people that were, you know, couldn't get to a grocery store and couldn't even have their own needs uh, met. So we turned our campaign, we actually stopped campaigning for the first month and we turned it into a uh, community support effort and people would reach out to us and just let us know what they needed, whether it was diapers for their baby or whether it was, um, you know, dish soap. And, and so we would send care packages all throughout the whole eight counties. So I spent the first month literally with gloves and mask on driving around eight counties, just delivering care packages to people's doorstep. After that uh, month, and things started calming down a little bit. People, I think, weren't as fearful to go to their own grocery store and things like that. We started holding um, everything really by uh, Zoom or Facebook Lives. You know, town, I did three or, uh, three or four town halls, and we did it by uh, you know remote access. That way, you, that's what you had to do: spend my days calling voters, seeing if they had any questions for me. You just had to be creative in this unprecedented time that we're facing. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in elections, name recognition plays a big part. People mm -hmm. have to know who you are. They have yep. to know where you're coming from and all, you know, various details about you and feel comfortable with, with, with voting for you. Now, Stefan has been the county controller. Uh, he was on TV before, you know, he was mm -hmm. uh, in public office. Uh, Chris Jacobs uh, was the county clerk, so he had uh, a public persona uh, and then went to the state legislature. Um, Nate McMurray has run mm -hmm. uh, a couple of times, so his name has been in the news. Mm -hmm. um, do you consider yourself at a disadvantage because you haven't had those public offices here in Erie County uh, right. or does that not uh, show in your polling? That right. Yeah, it's not a disadvantage. Um, it, Ten months ago, possibly it would have. We didn't spend the money for polling 10 months ago, but we knew that we would have to work on that. And that's why I was out every night of the week at every event possible, holding meet and greets, going to different events, introducing myself to voters. I'm a people person, that's who I am. You know, I don't hide from the voters. I don't hide from their questions. And so I wanted to get in front of the voters. Ask me anything you want, you know, get to know who I am. And so that's what I did for all of those months until March 15th. And um, I also have to just throw out there that you know, I have been an attorney for nearly 30 years, and I, and I was a judge, and, and so I'm not a complete unknown, especially doing my Fox News for four years. There were a lot of people that had seen me on Fox and Friends doing those segments all those years since early 2016. And the three people who you just mentioned, my opponents, you know, they're in uh, a lot of their jurisdiction where their name recognition is are, does not constitute New York 27 voters. Mm -hmm. You know, the city of Buffalo, Nate McMurray, he lives in Grand Island. Chris Jacobs, he lives in New York 27. He doesn't even live in our district and he's running here. And his Senate district is the majority of its New York 26. So yes, they may have name recognition, but in another district. So here in New York 27, which is eight counties and all these outlying counties, um, I don't believe that it's a factor right now. And, and then if, you know, if there is a question about that, you know, people are, are they still want to vote on the issues. And so I think that voters, we've become a lot more, a lot smarter than we used to be. And they're really doing their research and they really want to know who these candidates are. And so if you do the research, you know, Chris Jacobs doesn't fit. He's the wrong fit. We are the most conservative district in all of New York State. And as the reddest and most conservative district, we ought to have a conservative representing us. And so people who do the, 
research okay. are going to find out. Here's your chance to talk about each one of your opponents and how you contrast with them on policy, well, so mm -hmm. basically on policy. How would you be different in Washington than each of the others? Right. Well, the first difference is the uh, most readily apparent, and that's because I'm a non-politician. Mm -hmm. So I'm running as the outsider candidate. Um, I just believe it's so vitally important right now in our country. Let's go back to June 29th when I first got into this race. I was approached to, to look at this race. It wasn't that I woke up one day and said, oh, I think I'm going to run for Congress. You know, people came up to me and said, you have, you have a voice for conservatives. You know, you should use that voice. We're going to have this open seat. You know, you should look at it. Because it, initially there were, what, 18, 19 um, current men, male legislators that were interested in the seat. And you hear Bowerly and, you know, other people saying, where are the women? Where are the women? And so at that point, people started approaching me that you should look at this. But when you, when you go back uh, to the very beginning, when I entered into this race, I am a true believer that we have got to stop sending people um, into these positions that are only interested in their own political future. And I tell people, this is not about Beth Parlato. I have zero desire, zero, to build a political future. My only desire is to be a doer and help get something done for our nation and for our country because I'm somebody who stands on principle and I'm not going to be afraid to stand on principle. So when I compare myself to my other uh, opponents, that's the first thing. I'm not a career politician. And I'm just you know, a regular voter that truly and deeply cares about our district and our country. Hmm. Now, people have... Um very, very strong opinions of President Trump, mm -hmm. okay? They, they basically either vilify him or they believe that he's very, very successful in, mm -hmm. in what, what the country needs. Right. Um, tell us a little bit about your take in, in the, you know, the things that, that Trump has done since he's been in office. How's the coronavirus and this, this latest public disturbances and so on, how has this all come to play in his uh, candidacy, candidacy for the upcoming election, in his performance as president? Mm -hmm. uh, give us a little evaluation right. of what you think. Right. Well, going back to 2016, um, you know, I have Fox News clips out there, at least a dozen of them, that I was supporting the president from day one. So I, I did support him, and I'm going to tell you why. Going back to that whole establishment career politicians, I looked at him as the outsider. I looked that he was the businessman. He knew how to run businesses, and our country was in, um, I thought we were in trouble back uh, during 2016 after eight years of Obama. And I looked to the president, or looked to Trump at the time, candidate Trump, as the person, uh, the outsider who could fix it. And he beat 18 uh, establishment guys on that you know, stage, and he ended up being the candidate. And then look what he's done in three months. Um, I am a big supporter of the president's policies. You know, he didn't care what the establishment said. He, he doesn't care. You know, I mean, he just wanted to do what's best for the American people and it's best for our, our um, our country. Look at the economy. Not only did we have lowest unemployment, but he got rid of red tape regulations and big bureaucracy. He, um, you know, unemployment for minorities was at its lowest. Unemployment for women has, has the highest it's ever been in the, ever. And, and now look what happened. None of us could have predicted. Certainly not when I entered into this race in July, we could have predicted. First off, we had coronavirus. And then secondly, which just happened over the past four or five days with the um, with killing and um, you know racism and um, the riots and the fires and, and the uprisings that are going on across the country. Nobody could have predicted that. And unfortunately, um, he's in this position. We elected him, and it's and it's something that is beyond his control. And I think that he's doing exactly what he has to do: staying strong, stand firm. And be the leader of uh, be the leader of our nation, and we will get back. We will get our economy will come roaring back, and he's the guy to do it. You know, well, we have about a minute left. Um, just to sum it up, if you go to Washington as our representative, what do you think, in your mind, would mm -hmm. be the most important thing for you to accomplish when you're there? Mm -hmm. It changed. It, 
I would have said a different answer back six months ago that I'm saying now. So right now, the number one thing is going to be the economy. See, now months ago when I got into this race, the economy was the best it's ever had been, and, and it would be just to support the president and keep it going. Well, now with unemployment and it, look how many small businesses that probably are going to be going out of business, um, especially in these blue states who aren't reopening, um, we are heading for uh, very trying times in our country. So right now, the number one thing on the agenda would be the economy and what we're going to be able to do for the American people. Um, secondarily, unity. What, look, what's our country is hurting, and we have got to find a way to unify this nation. Um, I don't care if you are Democrat, Republican, progressive, conservative, or somewhere in between, um, and I don't care what skin color you are, and I don't care what religion you are, we are all Americans, and we have got to unify. And I'm somebody who wants to do it. You know, I love people. That's why I'm running in this race. And we, I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty, and I'm not afraid to work 24 hours a day to get it done. Well, you know, to paraphrase uh, Martin Luther King, you basically, you judge people by their behavior, not by the way, you know, they look or, you know, how you perceive uh, certain stereotypes, but how they behave, you know, how if, if somebody is genuine and has principles, again, the color doesn't matter and, and mm -hmm. ethnicity, n none of that right. matters. And there, you're right, there's far too much division in this country and I think it stems from an agenda to take power mm -hmm. because division is a way to d conquer, divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's a sad state of affairs when you have to basically win by pitting people against each other. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, that's another show. And I agree. <laughs> it's been a great pleasure to talk Thank with you. you. And uh, my guest, Beth Parlato, who's running for the 27th Congressional District. And the primary's coming up on the 23rd. Correct. And so get out and vote, be informed, know who and what you're voting for. Issues, you know, character counts, but issues and somebody who is going to do what you need done when they go to Washington to represent you. That's the key. That's what you make your decision on. Mm -hmm. So I wanna, I wanna thank Beth for being my guest and I wanna thank you for watching WBBZ TV and The Big Picture. Anyway, this is your TV station and we'll see you next time on The Big Picture.